<laughs> AJ, I just want to ask about the uh, PJ moment last night. Just share your thoughts on his pose. Um, I mean, uh, off rip, hilarious, you know, at the end of the day. But, I mean, that's just the energy that he brings to the game. You know, he doesn't take anything from anybody. And, at the end, you know, at the end of the day, he stands on all ten. You know, that's what you, what you pretty much got to say about that situation. I loved it. It brought a lot of energy that, you know, we for sure needed for the rest of the game. And we just kind of piggybacked off of that. Everybody was behind him, too. If you could put a song behind the stands, what song comes to mind? I have a couple. <laughs> uh, <laughs> man, it's, it's a number of songs that you can put behind it. I, the first one that I can think of is Boss Man d -Lo, the biggest, most mm -hmm. definitely. You know, that's the that's the only one that I think of that always plays in the back of my head whenever I see the picture. You gotcha, know? Gotcha. <laughs> From PJ to PG, tell us about that block you had on PG at the rim. Um, just doing my job at the end of the day, tracking the play and just being in the right spot at the right time to really just pretty much just protect home defensively, you know, being the anchor. Um, they tried to run kind of like a little fluff action on the other side to kind of take a, take the attention off of just like the initial drive. So I caught it early on, not just like I said, it was in the right spot at the right time. How disappointed were you in your first two games? What was your mindset going into game three last night? Um, in all honesty, you know, I just I just felt that, you know, I could do a lot better when it came to it. You know, game one, the guy hit in the mouth, game two, back, you know, almost gave out on me at the end of the day. And I just really just was like, you know, either, you know, we're going to sit this one out and let the back rest or we're going to get the back into it to where it feels like it's at 100 percent go out and just have a good game. And then with just like the mindset, you know, they gave us a run for our money the first two games. You know, we lost the first one, won the second one, you know, so coming out for sure, just with the energy that I wanted to come out with was just throwing the first punch. Um, and just having that mindset to be consistent with just everything that we want to do defensively, offensively, and just the energy throughout the building. So just trying to throw that first punch and send the tone was just like the main message that I wanted to just get across with the team. And just come out and just have fun with the crowd too. Your back's okay now? Walking better, you know, feeling better. You <laughs> set the tone pretty early in there. You had a dunk off, off the miss, and then you tip slam your own mm -hmm. rebound. I guess when you have two plays like that back to back, I guess what does it do considering the time? I mean, in all honesty, you know, it just it gets it just gets your blood flowing at the end of the day. Just you know, starting off like that is just something that really just sets the tone energy wise, physicality wise, everything that we needed to be able to come out and just dominate the full forty eight minutes of the game. One of the main storylines from the first two games was the lack of lobs. Even Jason mm -hmm. Kidd talked about it. Mm -hmm. You guys kinda got it back last night. What do you yeah. think the secret is to just, you know, keeping that going? Um, really just the connection with the guards and the bigs at the end of the day, you know, guards get downhill off the big screens. We got to make sure we get a hit on those screens, get those guys downhill, depending on just like the defense that they're trying to throw at us. And just, you know, making sure, like I always say, being in the right spot at the right time, you know, whether it's a three and one side setting where it come, when it comes to just like our ISO game and stuff, getting those bigs to just really just make a decision on whether they want to go contest the shot or play back on us. At the end of the day, we're going to try to get a bucket. So... I asked Luca about it yesterday in reference to the lives. He mm -hmm. said it's just two points. But yeah. Is it really just two points when you're one? Oh, yeah, most definitely. It's just two points. You know, I really don't always look for it. At the end of the day, I tell guys, if you can get it on the rim, if you miss, I'm always there for the rebound because I'm always in position. At the end of the day, when it comes to, just like I said, the bigs making that decision, if they go contest the shot and they make you miss, you always got somebody on the back end that's going to come and help you clean up the glass. Um, but yeah, for sure, just two points, you know, even though like any two points can give us any type of energy on the floor, no matter who's scoring it. So that's how we kind of look at it. What did you guys do to hold Kawhi, PG, and the rest of the total of 17 points? Just sticking to our principles when it came defensively, you know, in all honesty, and just staying together, being there for each other. If anybody switched on to those guys, we made sure somebody was talking on the backside, and we made sure that we sent them inside of the three-point line because they wanted, to, they just wanted to, you know, get up as many threes as they possibly could, and those are the things that can beat us. Anything on the inside, inside of the paint, that's something that we kind of, I would say, consisted to harp on saying that, you know, we'll live with those if they make them and if they miss them at the end of the day. As a team, what has helped you stick to your defensive principles like throughout the series and since you've arrived in Dallas? Uh, studying film and just kind of like paying attention to details and really just transferring all of that over to the game and having the mindset to really just kind of like implement that into our defense and having the, I would say, urge and the sense of, well, yeah, the sense of urgency to really just kind of like, I would say, I can't even think of the word right now. I would say put it into play 
into just like what we wanted to do defensively, you know, not letting them get the things that they wanted. You know, they were trying to get to their spots. And, you know, I'm pretty sure at the end of the day we frustrated them because, you know, we were doing the things that we, you know, for sure kind of like worked on, practiced on, walked through. Um, and it's just, you know, just pretty much came a second nature to us because we've been working so much on it. And we just transferred it over to the game. And it turned out good for us in our favor. We just have to stay consistent with it. Y'all were, were down earlier in the series mm -hmm. after game one. Y'all bounced back strong game two, game three. Mm -hmm. What's the key to staying focused and not getting too high after a win? Because you know the Clippers are going to try to bounce back. Uh, just know that they're going to try to come out and throw the first punch tomorrow at the end of the day and trying to stay consistent with just the mindset to come out and just have that same start that we had last night. You know, it's a long series. They're not going to go down easy. We're not either. So it's going to be a dog fight at the end of the day. Yeah, you know, we, we know that you guys get energy from the fans for mm -hmm. just their, you know, their loudness and their noise. But if y'all look out into the stands tomorrow and see them hitting the PJ, yeah. what is that going to do for y'all? Oh, no, it's, it's most definitely going to give us a lot of energy. It's going to be something dope because it's something that stuck with him. And I'm pretty sure it's going to make him feel good, too, and help him have a good game at the end of the day. Daniel, we talked a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Daniel, we talked a little bit about music earlier. I noticed uh -huh. over the past few months of the season, y'all were running out to Future's new album. Mm -hmm. Who has who has the aux cord on the team, or was that something y'all collectively decided on? Mm -hmm. What aux cord on the team? It kind of varies, you know. It's, whether it's Luca or it's like D Jones or pretty much any other guy on the team, you know. Usually we playing like Big X the plug. Luca's playing, you know, his music, you know. So. <laughs> it's just a different variety of music that we listen to on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's just dope because it's any type of music that is being played, you can always do like a little two-step or something too. Gets your energy going and it gets you to a point to where you feel good and you're having fun with just everybody that's around you. And just with the music that is played in the arena, I don't know who I don't know who's a part of that, but I mean I love the I love the music choice for sure. Uh, for as much as attention uh, like you guys have on the Clippers defense obviously, or offense, obviously they have attention on your offense as well too. Uh, you know, game three things seem to open up. You know, like with the screening connection, flipping screens, like Luca rejecting screens. How important is it to kind of build on that chemistry, that timing when you're in that playoff environment? It is very important because of just like the consistency that we want to implement into the game. We want to come down and just whatever they give us, we take advantage of that at the end of the day. They want to try to weak Luca every time when it comes to us and screens for him. We always flip the screens and try to get him downhill as much as possible. Especially with just like, you know, how they play our pick and rolls. You know, it makes it easier for us when, you know, we kind of play into just like what they want us to do because we always have a backup plan for when it comes to any type of defense that's thrown at us. Because, I mean, I mean, I know Luca, he's seen every defense. Kyrie has seen every defense. So being around these guys, it's kind of helping everybody else learn just how to get around like certain obstacles when it comes to the defense of the other team.